distinguished members of the media, distinguished citizens. It is a great pleasure that today we are again hosting the High Representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy and Vice President of the European Commission, Mr. Josep Borel. Dear Josep, welcome to Skopje and thank you for starting your visit right here on a meeting in the government. This meeting comes right after the meeting that I had this afternoon with the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, where we he again highlighted our excellent relations and support from the USA on our path towards full-fledged membership in the EU and the implementation of the necessary reforms. With the State Secretary, we agreed that uh, the, it is a strategic uh, partnership focused mostly on the fruitful cooperation and it will continue to develop in the future. He also assured me that North Macedonia is highly valued by the USA as a NATO ally, but also in regional context as a factor of stability in the Western Balkans. I am glad that the EC Vice President Borrell reiterated the same on behalf of the EU at the meeting we had right uh, just before this press. He, the High Representative is here due to the participation in the OSCE ministerial meeting, and I want to emphasize once again that we, are, we take pride with our role and constructive approach during the presidency of the organization, and I hope that here at, uh, counts, uh, at the ministerial meeting here in Skopje, important decisions will be made about the future of the organization. As on every other occasion, I will avail myself uh, of this one to talk openly with the High Representative about uh, the most important issues related to the reform and European integration process of North Macedonia. I want to thank the High Representative for his uh, strong support for the integration path of North Macedonia in the EU. We found that uh, North Macedonia has a clear European integration perspective, and as a government, we have real determination and are working on introducing European standards and values. We are a government that the international community considers to have strengthened democracy, strengthened the rule of law, made progress in the reform of the justice system, and developed a solid market economy, as indeed befits a country that should be part of the great European family. This can be seen from the screening process. We have quality presentations in all chapters, and the comments from the European Commission to our distinguished guest, Mr. Borrell, are excellent. North Macedonia has a good percentage of compliance in the legal framework and in the adoption of the laws. The report on the screening process will be a roadmap with uh, which will strengthen the focus in the reform of the public administration, the mechanisms for the rule of law, and, of course, the fight against corruption and enhancement of the market economy in the country. The screening process proceeded at a predictable pace. We maintained momentum throughout the process and expect it to be completed next week. As a government, we did not allow the internal political disputes to sideline the reforms needed to approximate EU standards and laws, nor to make this process difficult, which was successfully led by the Deputy Prime Minister on Euro Integrations, together with his colleagues, but also all other stakeholders from the ministries and state institutions who took part in the screening process that lasted throughout the last period in Brussels. We both clearly agree that our EU integration must continue. It is a process that had started and will not stop until full-fledged membership of North Macedonia into the European Union, because our citizens deserve a better, richer future, a better standard of living. The future generations deserve to live in an EU member state, but instead of being in another country, it should be here, at home in North Macedonia. Our citizens do not deserve and do not want status quo, and our citizens do not deserve a repeated isolation as the one we've, we've, we've been seeing for 11 years. EU membership is our goal and we do not have other alternatives. Whether we will be there soon depends only on us. That is, on all of us, on all political actors and political stakeholders in this country who have a responsibility before the people to deliver results on the way to the European Union without any excuses. That is why 
As I announced in the past period, that in the beginning of December a leadership meeting will be organized. I inform you that tomorrow we will send an invitation for leadership meeting to all presidents of the parliamentary political parties as well as to the president of the assembly. At the meeting, the meeting will be scheduled for Monday and we will discuss the European integration of North Macedonia the regular presidential and parliamentary elections, as well as the amendments to the electoral code pursuant to the recommendations of the OSCE. With the High Representative, we also discussed the development plan of the European Union for the Western Balkans, and we agreed that it will give a new, strong impetus to the European integration process. The plan requires continuation of the reform processes that are ahead of us and for which we have the political will, knowledge and capacity to fulfill them. The plan offers excellent opportunities for the countries in the accession process and we plan to work with the aim of making maximum use of the funds it makes available because it provides better integration of the region acceleration of the reforms and acceleration of the common European mar market before being part of the EU. I informed the High Representative that immediately after the formal presentation of the plan, we actively worked on creating a structure for its implementation and we had a very important coordination meeting with representatives from the neighboring countries two weeks ago here in Skopje. I've said on many occasions and at the risk of repeating myself, I will now underline again that the European integration are very important for the economic development of the country because they provide access to financial resources, but also development of the economy, development of the social security and democracy as our citizens want and as, our, and as they will have by 2030. The grants and the macrofinancial support from the EU have allowed us significant development so far. With EU membership, the results will be even better. Growth of the GDP, multifold increase of the standard of living, the salaries, increase of the investments, increase of the number of companies, all everything what we see in the countries that were not members of the EU and now are countries that were behind us in many parameters and now are ahead of us only because they are part of the European Union and only because they have the opportunity to live and work on the common market of half billion people. Therefore, I call for our strategic goal, membership in the great European family by 2030, to be placed above any party or personal goal, and in the coming period to realize all the necessary activities with the aim of further increase in the dynamic of our accession process to the European Union. Thank you. Once again, I extend my gratitude to Joseph Borrell, who started his visit at the annual conference of the OSCE right here in the government on a bilateral meeting with me and on this very important press conference. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Now I invite the High Representative of the European Union, Mr. Joseph Borrell, to take the floor.